Let's study about the addition of carbon to alkene. Usually, carbon has a four balance bond. When the carbon has a lone pair electron, this kind of a species is called as a carbene. And this lone pair electron can react with the alkene's pi electron, and it can be inserted here, then it can form cyclopropane structure. So this is the general structure of carbon addition to alkene. Now, let's think how we can make the carbon species. For example, if you use a chloroform, chloroform's proton is an acidic proton because it has a three electron withdrawing at the chloride and this proton is relatively acidic. If you use a strong base, it can capture this proton and it can form this kind of an anion. This is a carbon-centered anion, so this is called as a carboanion. This carboanion can be rearranged by donating this electron to chloride, and the product is a chloride the ion and carbon species. So, as a summary, if you use if you treat the chloroform with a strong base, it can form CCl2 carbon species. The carbon species has a two bond and one lone pair electron and one empty p orbital. So as a whole, this carbon has sp2 orbital structure, means this is planar structure, planar triangle of the structures, which is similar to carbocation, but in carbocation, it has a three bond and center of the carbon is positively charged. But in this carbon structure, the overall charge is a neutral, and then instead of a one bond, then one lone pair electron occupies that sp2 orbital. Now let's look at the real reaction. So chloroform treated with a strong base, it can form CCl2 carbon. And carbon's lone pair electron can react with pi electron of alkene. So two electron meets two electron and make two bonds like this. And the product is a cyclopropane structure. If the, sub the substrate is a cyclic uh, alkene, like a cyclohexene, then it can form fused ring. Here, this double bond meet with this CCL2 and make this product. Chloroform is a convenient reagent by simply reacting with uh, the strong base, it can form carbon, but the product is contains the two chlorine atom. So sometimes we don't want to have that chlorine atom, then you can choose this chemistry. Now, if you start with the diiodomethane and react with the zinc, then it can form this kind of intermediate, and this intermediate can be rearranged to generate uh, the carbon. And this is simple carbon, CH2 carbon, can react with the alkene, and then the end product is cyclopropane without any kind of uh, the chlorine atom on it. So this convenient uh, the reaction is named as a Simmons-Smith reaction. Now, let's think about the radical addition to alkene. In nature, we can find many polymers. So carbohydrate polymer, let's, uh, let's take the example. Glucose has uh, multiple hydroxyl groups, and those hydroxyl groups can be uh, the condensed together by removing one molecule of water, can be connected by ether bond, so glucose polymer can form cellulose. Amino acids is the building block of uh, the protein, and amino acid has a one amino group and acid group, and by condensation reaction, it can form the long chain of a protein, and each unit is composed of amino acids. Nucleic acid is composed of this ribose phosphate. In this case, the connection point is hydroxyl group and phosphate group, and this diester bond the connect this building block into polymer of nucleic acid to make a DNA or RNA. 
So this is uh, examples. These are the examples of uh, natural products, the polymers. Double bond containing alkene can form this kind of a linear polymer. Here, the building block is a two carbon unit, and then the new bond is formed, and then two electrons in this new bond is donated from this pi bond. The reaction is based on radical reaction. So for initiating the radical reaction, we need to use the initiator, which can be uh, the easily breaking down uh, the homolytically, and in this case, this kind of peroxide is common initiators. Once radical is formed, then this radical transfer that electrons. Now here, one electron moving, you can see the half head of the arrow, and this reaction can generate another radical, and this radical is still living uh, the reactive radical, then the reaction can be transferred to the next step. This radical can react with another building block of alkene. And the product is, again, it has, it has the, the living radical. It can repeat this reaction many times. Eventually, this can form this kind of a polymer. The example we have seen, we have used the ethylene. So in the case, we call the product as a polyethylene. Now, if the, the starting material is a propylene with an extra other methyl group, now the product is a polypropylene with extra other methyl group other on each positions. If the starting material is a styrene instead of methyl group, then in this case, a phenyl group is attached. Now the product is polystyrene. But if you look at those backbone structure, Backbone is, a, backbone is exactly the same structure. If the building block is an asymmetric structure, the growing radical has two options. One option is to generate this secondary radical, or the other position can generate primary radicals. So, by observation, we can realize that the radical stability is also similar to carbocation, more substituted radical is more stable than the less substituted one. So that's why the growing is also happening. Radical attacks this less hindered position and then generating this secondary radical and it can go other forward. So as, a, as the result, the product is alternatively the methyl group introduced the structures. Depending on the different other starting materials, Ethane, the ethylene can form polyethylene, propylene into polypropylene, and with the extra chloro group, polyvinyl chloride, uh, also known as a PVC. Styrene can generate a polystyrene, and tetrafluoroethene can generate the famous teflon. If you compare this reaction with the other addition reaction to akin, so most of those cases, the alkene is a nucleophile, right? And the electron is donated to an electrophile, and it can form this kind of activated carbocation as an intermediate. And then the negatively charged nucleophile come in and then finish up the reactions. This is what we have seen as an addition reaction. In radical reaction, the radical initiator attack this alkene. And the intermediate is can react with other partner, but their partner is not nucleophile like this. Their partner is another building block of alkene, and that reaction generates again another radical. That's why this reaction is continuously moving on and doesn't stop as the single step reactions. So this is the big difference between the addition reaction, the two polymerization of alkenes. Now, let's think about the reaction stereochemistry. In acid-catalyzed hydration reactions, to alkene, the OH group can be introduced, and we have learned following the Markov-Nikov rule, this OH group is introduced into more substituted position here, not here. Right? Now, if you look at this position, this position is prochiral position. Prochiral position is the position where the just a single step reaction can generate chiral product. So in this case, if you add 
starting material is alkyl, but by adding this hydroxyl group, it can form chiral material, but it, it, the product is exactly one-to-one -one mixture of S form and R forms. If you look at the intermediate, the intermediate is a carbocation like this. Carbocation is a planar structure which has a sp2 orbital. Then the excess direction of a hydroxyl group is up and down, and the chance is exactly the same. That's why the end product is exactly the same amount of the 50-50%, one-to-one product of the two, uh, two the enantiomers is the product. In natural product, uh, the, that kind of addition reaction to alkene also observed. In this, uh, the substrate aconitate, this position and this position, both of them are pro position. Here, when the hydration happens, two position is introduced by hydroxyl group, three position is introduced by the hydrogen, and both of them uh, the became the chiral center. That means this product can form four different stereoisomer, but interestingly, in nature, utilizing this kind of an enzyme out of a four, only single uh, the isomer is formed. In this case, if you look at the hydroxyl group introduction site, it's a possible from rare phase or C phase, but because the catalyst is a chiral catalyst enzyme and product is the only the single product could be formed. But in simple chemical reactions, if the starting material is not chiral and catalyst is not chiral either, then alkyl material cannot generate single isomer of chiral molecules. So at best, if the product is chiral, it will be ended up with the racemic mixture, means half and half of R and S form could be formed. Now, if a starting material is chiral, so here, this is a chiral center, and this position is a pro chiral center. Now, here, if you add the water molecule, hydrogen added here, and hydroxyl group is added here. Now, the product is, this is original chiral center, chirality center, and then new chirality center can be formed here. Then, what do you think? This product is a single isomer. If you look at the intermediate structure, so this is the original chirality center, and this is sp2 carbocation positions. Now, hydroxyl group can attack from upside or bottom side. It can form two different products in principle. Even though the stereochemistry of this position can affect, affect partially maybe some preference of addition site, but because of this basically planar structure of carbocation character, the attack, the attack position could happen in both sides. Then the end product is one side, uh, one position of a chirality center is the same, but the other position of here, it would be opposite the configurations. Then in this case, what is the relationship of these two products? They are enantiomers? No, they are diastereomers. So if this reaction is very well carefully uh, monitored and then controlled, it's uh, possible to push the reaction into only one enantiomer, one diastereomer, but in many cases it's uh, difficult and you may get some different ratio of mixture of two diastereomers. Okay, we finished the chapter 8 of Alkin reaction. So next, next week, we are going to move to alkynes, triple bond. And as usual, the next the class is the next Tuesday, and the assignment is the Tuesday morning. Okay. If you have uh, questions, you can ask the questions through email, Kakaoto, or you can ask the questions in the next class. Guys, have a good weekend, and see you next week.